Yeah, it says it's okay. Recording. I think it's um I'm not sure if it's gonna give us that uh sometimes they give like a 30 seconds thing, but I don't think it's there. I don't think I said it that way. So I think we are beginning, Jirelin. <laughs> Okay. I think I think we are beginning. So, um, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, my name is Elsie. We are just going to begin. My name is Elsie. I'm the owner of the Vision Production, and on this channel, I talk about culture, uh, traditions, lifestyles of different other people. Uh, as a native of Zimbabwe, I talk about a lot about Zimbabwe and my culture shocks and differences that I found in other places, in particular in America. And today, I have one of my best friends that I have on the um, on this show, and we are, I'm going to interview one of my best friends, and I'm going to give her the time to introduce herself. She's going to tell you who she is and what she do and so on. And we are going to talk about, she has been actually asking me so many questions. This is what brought this. I thought about it and I thought, I think it would be a good idea to just put it on the, um, on the channel and just uh, let other people also hear and also find out some of the things that maybe they are already asking. So that's exactly what we are doing today. So Jurel, and welcome to the channel. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell the viewers, the people, who you are, what you do, <clears throat> and if also you have a social media platform uh, where people can find you and what you do. Well, um, that can be a handful to answer because I don't have a social media, media platform. But my name is Jeraylin. I've been in the field of education since probably 1974, maybe. So quite some time. I'm not going to try and do the math on air here, but... <laughs> And it's, it's my, my journey has taken me through many forms and fields. I've been in healthcare all my life. And in the healthcare field, I always felt that there was something missing in the approach that we did for the medical model. Mm -hmm. There was a part that was missing. And I, I won't go into all of that, but um, currently, I feel that my strength is in helping people to understand that we're more than just our physical bodies. We are mind, body, and soul. And soul has kind of a big word to it, but energy or spirit and a connection mm -hmm. to source. And, and our consciousness is bringing us to that understanding on many different levels. But as far as contacting me, my website is unitedhealthandwellness.org. Org. Make sure you do the ORG or you'll go to .net and get something else. But as I mentioned, I don't have that platform really developed. I'm in the process of, of streamlining it. I just didn't want to lose the name, so I keep it going. And okay. Elsie, you're a role model for me in, in many ways. I know you don't <laughs> think so, but... This technology Thank you. <laughs> is it's 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 wonderful. And I just want to say that, you know, we've been friends a long time. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't been until recently that I realized that our journey has been similar, but we haven't really discussed it. Our friendship is has been based on our external realities, our families. The yeah. things that are yeah. happening with our children, because we have yes. children that have grown up, our parents, right. mm -hmm. the the new births in our families and our losses, you know. And as you get older, you start to experience more of the decline in physical health. But right. I'm, I'm right. really happy to be able to share this journey with you. And I love your topic culture, you know, <laughs> the culture. relationships. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. culture is nothing more than, than relationships from one understanding or one perception 
okay. and another understanding and another perception and how those two interact with one another. And it can, it can take many different um, directions with that. So that's correct. That's correct. So that's, that's, that's amazing because it's, when you mentioned about that, we have known each other. I was thinking this morning as I was writing my notes, I sort of like write a little, some notes to remember some things that I want to uh, bring out to this conversation. I was thinking to have been over 30 something years since I have wow. known you. And uh, I was thinking, you know, I was thinking a lot about this journey we are taking together and especially when you dropped the interest of you wanting to uh, visit Zimbabwe, this is after 30 some years, you know, that I never, I never imagined that this would come by. So today I would like to ask you, what brought this interest in particular this time? Hmm. Well, you know, you've actually asked me a couple of times if I'd be interested in going with you because you've gone back home a couple of times. Yeah. And each time I thought, I don't know, it's a long trip. I don't know anybody there. I just know you. Uh, I, I love the thought of the nature of Africa. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that a lot of African-American people talk about going home because that's where we're from. I'm a little bit of an odd duck sometimes, I think, in the way most people think. It's not that I feel like I'm going home home, mm -hmm. but I'm going to nature, to a place that is on this earth that hasn't been tampered with as much as modern society. Like Europe, I feel, has more of a uh, development culture. Yes. Um, even Egypt, in my mind, I think it's more developed. Um, but there's, there's, there is a, a longing for me to want to go to Africa because I just feel it's more nature-based. And it, I think that might be personal. Maybe it mm -hmm. might be relationship wise to other people. But then when I started doing, um, the work that I'm doing where I want to, uh, bring my programs to people. Mm -hmm. I think that Africa might be a good place to bring my awareness program. You know, when I, when I listen to people like, oh, uh, Greg Braden, who talks about the indigenous people in different cultures, there's mm -hmm. so much spirituality, I feel, in okay. places like Africa. And I want to connect with that energy, with that spirit to, to help grow myself and become more of who I, I feel I'm meant to be as long as I'm here. So Africa is mm -hmm. definitely on the top of the list for that. And then when I hear you, Elsie, talk about your, your relatives and your ancestors and some of the, the magic of life, I think, yeah. yes, this is where I need to go. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, um, I think it's a feeling how I feel, I feel strongly about my heritage as a uh, Zimbabwean, uh, a native of Zimbabwe. I feel very close to home. I feel my heart being there. I like modern life, you know, that's America. <laughs> and I always put it this way. I wish I could take a piece of Africa and a piece of America and put them together and live right there <laughs> just i'm here i mean in in the western world and i'm in africa and i'm like that but reality is not like that so sometimes we have to you know literally you know take trips to go and experience this um and when you say you want to go to africa and experience nature africa is huge as you know what in particular made you say Zimbabwe? And this time, <laughs> I want to know why this time? Because you came from like almost like the blue, like, and honestly, in the beginning, I was thinking, are you serious? And I think I asked you that, like, are you serious? 
because I'm thinking it's a big joke. <laughs> so <laughs> Zimbabwe and why now? Uh, I have to say that, you know, the Victoria Falls being one of the seven wonders of the world, I think has an energy source, but it's not just the falls. Mm -hmm. I think that it's, it's a personal journey for me. And, and in the last maybe three or four years, I've really been searching deep in my soul for if I want to bring information to people about being aware of their, who they are, having a sense of who they are, if I haven't made that journey myself, it's hard to, to bring it out. So I think I'm on a journey. Part of it is being on a journey. And a lot of it has to do with you, Elsie. You're from Zimbabwe. And I remember very clearly in my meditation, some people call them prayers or meditation, but in that space where I try to connect with my source, mm -hmm. I was very clearly shown that a lot of the resources and things that I've asked for are right around me and I've never tapped into those sources. And so I started listening to the things around me and that's when you and I started our, um, yeah, I don't know if we thing. called it mastermind, <laughs> but, but that connection, yeah. you know? Yeah. We, we, yeah. Maybe let me just um, say this. Um, we started to be working together in a sense, you know, putting our, our thoughts or our understanding of things. How should we put that? We are working together. We are sharing our ideas. We are sort of like co-working together, me and you. Yeah. And, and, um, I, I think, the, the, I remember I've been in three mastermind programs. A mastermind is a, a process that people may have heard of before. But in my mind, what I wanted was I wanted people who are like-minded to be in my circle, like an inner circle. And we support each other and whatever it is that we have a passion for. Mm -hmm. And I had just come out of another mastermind that, that I had created. I created both of those that I was in, but it didn't hit the spot. And somehow when I was talking with, with you, <laughs> we were on the same page. And wow. I never knew it. And that was that was where I was saying that in my spirit and in my soul, something was saying your resources, what you're asking for is there. You just I haven't I haven't seen it. My eyes weren't open to it. And uh, I remember some of the topics we got on to was just so inspiring. And I thought this is what I need to support me in my journey, because if, if a person doesn't have the same vision, it's hard to talk with yes. someone who doesn't envision things the way you do. And, and, and I find that I found that commonality with you. Yes. Yes. I think um, in the recent years, also, I want to tell the people I'm going to put your conduct information, even though right now you are like on pause, you know, mm -hmm. but you are coming along and you have a lot to share to the world. And I want that to be available. So I'll put the information in the bottom of the link of the uh, video and uh, of this stream. So anybody who would want to um, learn more about what Jurelyn does, um, I mean, she's amazing, actually. She left a lot of things. She She's a, a great massage therapist that I just, I mean, I can't forget that. And she's into another higher level of what she's doing. And, um, you know, I, I am impressed by her many, many times with what she do and how many things she managed to do, actually. So many things. And, uh, you know, so I would I want to leave that link so people can, um, you can get it if you need to. Um, when you mention about, you know, when we talk, you know, things were like sequencing, like really coming together. You know, I came to the point where I say friends, even if friends or relatives or family member, whatever, you know, they are not same when it comes to 
what you agree upon or not agree just but really where your 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 spirit settle together mm -hmm. like when mm -hmm. you are talking to someone and you feel you can really go deeper with them or you just need to talk this far and you have to stop you know that that right, kind right. of uh, where you just know i cannot go that far i just have to talk this much and i have to stop and i come to realize even the many friends we get you know you have a certain like a, a limit of how much can i talk and then you know you measure it you know and sometimes you just know i stop here and then with the other friend you know you go that far and i feel like with you it's one of those things where i feel my heart you can go far when i talk about what i'm talking about dreams and things that i wish and things that i want to do it's like it's endless with you <laughs> i feel like i can talk and i can say and i can describe it and i can <laughs> i can do all those things um and i think that it brought that like um a door it's like that door that opened up real wide for us mm. to begin this agreed yeah. thank you yeah and, yeah and i absolutely feel the same and, and i think for me what happens is that i like two points you mentioned america and and zimbabwe to me it's like the physical and the energy or the spirit and you'd like to have that place in the middle I, I, when you said that, I immediately thought about how far we've come in our ability to scientifically understand things, and even uh, uh, energetically, if you look at at um, AI or information world. But the merging of that, to me, is actually in our bodies, you know, and or in our brains, if I want to be more precise. And, and so that's the one point. The other thing that, that we support each other on, I think, and we, we accelerate is that when you talk, I see things, how it happens in the brain. For example, when you speak about, um, about how our relationship developed, it's actually a vibration in the brain as our neurons are firing they create a frequency and that frequency is how we communicate with each other and when we're in sync or we're thinking the same we're supporting that neurological firing that neurological process in our brains and it stimulates you you start to receive chemicals like uh endorphins that you know that give you that rise and that's the kind of thing i like to talk about but we actually do it when we talk to each other yes and and and, and so we get excited and then i like to put i put words to it and the expression and the the language to it and you put the emotion to it and that's really you know that's that's our support system and i think that's, that's why we continue to work with each other but i'd like to i'd like to in my programs bring that to everyone yes. and i think that in our interaction with each other we can do that yes bring and that's Africa where and america together yeah that's where everything actually is going from this point it's actually the beginning and it is going to be continuation and we haven't even talked about the end yet. We just talk about the continuation. We have the beginning, then we talk about the continuation. And I just wanted to add, when you see me looking down, I'm sort of like writing some good points that's coming out. And also I'm trying to recollect what I have written. Um, when Jurel and you were talking about, I am the person who sort of like have the... I want to call it like the intellectual part of it. And you have all the the the, the right words to put into what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so when I talk about my culture and I'm talking about my traditions, you have all these 
other scientific things that goes inside and it and just match, you know, sort of. And you wonder how that can be, you know. You are talking about lifestyle, culture, and, uh, you know, traditions. But actually, those things, they are equally. So can you just, before we go into the niji grudge of the other tradition, because that's where I'm going, you know me, I'll talk mm -hmm. about those things. But can you explain the uh, connection between those things, cultural things, traditional lifestyle of people, and what with the work that you do? Where do they merge? What, what is the connection? Well, if, if, if I'm understanding your question, um, you want me to show the connection between the cultural differences and the work that I do and how they um, might interact with each other. Yeah, I, right. I, yeah, rather I, than I, okay. cultural difference, maybe just culture in general. Okay. You know, yeah. Well, maybe maybe I can maybe I'll capture the answer in speaking about it this way. I'm not sure, and then if not, just let me know. Mm -hmm. um, I think that when we uh, don't understand the essence of something, and and let's say that there's there's diversity. Mm -hmm. that the one group of people does something one way and another group of people does something another way. And we have a perception that our way is right and the other way can't be right if it's different. That's a perception. And as these perceptions evolve into, into different cultures, it, it creates conflict. I believe, or I feel that our consciousness is recognizing that that conflict is actually within ourselves. It's not out here. The bigger it is, the more we project the problem out here, but the problem is actually within us. And as we learn more about who we are or, or what we are, we're more energy, we're more from the same things, we're more from the same source. Mm -hmm. um, and as we become more at peace with ourselves, and, and I feel like I'm not doing a real good job of, of getting to the essence of what I want to say, but I think that in our, our, our understanding of what energy is, we can understand mm -hmm. how the diversity is actually a beautiful thing if yes. we don't feel threatened. It's when we feel threatened that that difference is somehow going to impact who we are. Then we begin to develop a resistance or develop a protective mode. And if protection means I have to squash that that's outside of me because it's too big for me to, to let be exist, that's where, where our conflicts are. So if, if we can show or if we can see more of the beauty in the difference, more of the beauty in the contrast, and, and recognize that that actually helps us to be more of who we are. You know, yes. I've expanded because I no longer feel threatened by this. I can see another part of it. Then I've become more than what I was before. If we can reach that level of consciousness, I think our, our problems, on, on this planet are solved. Um, we just have to do it on our own individual journeys. And I think that happens in every relationship that we have. You know, we start out small with our children usually, and we grow in love from there and we experience things we've never experienced before. And we overcome things because we look at something through the eyes of love now that we never would have looked at before. And we accept it because this is a reflection of us. So in our cultures, we have to experience those cultures. You shared things with me that you never knew before in another culture. And, and you recognize the beauty of it, the tomato story. I love that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I love it. 
but that's just an example of you didn't know. You didn't know what are they doing with these tomatoes, you know? So for for those who don't know what uh, Jurelen is saying, <laughs> she's talking about one of the videos, and you can go and watch it. It's uh, a culture shock in Korea that I had. And I really want to stress, you know, sometimes, you know, people cannot understand why actually, you know, it's so important to uh, to know or to to hear stories about other people's experience with culture and how important it is actually to know about other cultures. So more and more hearing from Jurelen, it actually gives even more power to the whole thing that learning about cultures, learning about traditions and all those things in between is so critical because she mentioned about the, um, the essence of something and the essence of something you get it in the culture of the people that's really where the essence lies it's not the person that you are looking at it's what they practice on a day-to-day -day basis their culture their traditions their lifestyle that's where the essence is and also she talked about perception we build up perceptions around you know people or how they do things because we don't know what what the essence is with these people we don't know their culture we don't know their traditions so right here i would like actually to tell people if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do so because that's what i do and as we go forward we are going to hear even more from Jurelin on what she covered when it comes to things like that in the inside now. I talk external. I talk about the external, what things are, how they happen and all that. But Jurelin is going to give us some insights as we move forward about what does this really do? What kind of traditions sometimes, not, not a particular tradition, but what traditions might do to us in our life to actually form who we are. If I'm, if I'm, I hope I'm right with this. Yeah. Really. yeah. So please subscribe to the channel, Culture Infusion. Please subscribe to the channel so you can hear more about what we'll be covering as we move forward. And also ring the notification bell so that you can be notified of any video you heard her talking about the tomato video. So, you know, you hear about those videos as we move forward too. So please do so. Uh, so we continue. Now I'm going to talk about my, the things that I interested in the external part of it. So Jurelen, what do you, when you sit down, I know back, back, to, back and back, you think about this. I'm going to Zimbabwe. What kind of things come into your mind? <laughs> well, externally, <clears throat> this may seem superficial, but it's the question I asked you before. And I want to ask you again so that you can get it in this recording. But I thought, what do I wear? I mean, it yeah. seems like a simple question, but it's actually a serious question for me because I'm in Wisconsin. Yes. And it's cold right now. Oh, yes. So yes. I know that when I go there, I'm going to wear something cool. But do I wear shorts? In everything that I've seen in Zimbabwe, I never saw a person wear shorts. So do women wear shorts in Zimbabwe or do they wear the long skirts, which I don't have any? <laughs> <You know? laughs> because if... if and another thing that I thought of was that if we're going to a, a, a developed city, which Zimbabwe is, you have family that are in the villages. Yes. So if I go to the village, it, do I wear shoes that are old and going to be okay on dirt <laughs> roads because I don't want them to get, you know, and, and my mind is very analytical. So I'm thinking, I don't want to dress up with new shoes and look out of place. I want to fit in, but I don't want to, you know, I, I really don't 
care too much about what people think about me, but I do care about what your family thinks about your friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, it seems like a simple question. I don't okay. know. I like to be comfortable. Um, you know, I, I'm going to like, I don't think I'm going to answer the question like this is the way it is. Because mm -hmm. like you say, I think when you mention per perception, you know, people can give any, any of that <laughs> all day long, or every day, right. whatever they want. And it changes. <laughs> <laughs> so so it, it, it changes on their mood. mood. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But I can give you a general understanding mm -hmm. with also uh, you putting in mind that um, I haven't lived in Zimbabwe for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. So within that time, literally, I had seen lots of changes. Things that I hadn't, when I was growing up, growing up in the countryside, um, there's so many things that I, I can describe I haven't seen. So I'm going to give you that perception. I'm going to give you that, like, just like a vague, understanding but i think it's clear enough for you to guide yourself into what you can okay. do okay so i would say my growing up i did not grow up especially in the village you seeing people wearing pants uh that was not really there for women it was not there but when you get into the city you will find a few people then were wearing pants but as I went back and forth to Zimbabwe, back and forth, I mean, the, my last was 2020, when I also got stranded there. Uh, that's all other videos that I have about that, for those who don't know. But um, not only that, 2020, when I, 2012, I took my family there. And uh, a number of things did happen <laughs> during that time. <laughs> My family are Americans, you know, my children are Americans. So what that means is that they brought their American with them <laughs> <laughs> to Zimbabwe. So I've heard um, stories. Yeah, yeah. So that's another whole another whole story. But um people they are wearing pants now, I would want to say, yeah. Um even in the country, myself. I, I, I went home in 2020, I went to the village and I was wearing pants and I didn't, I didn't feel any, feel like, what is that? What is she doing? Especially in the home where you grew up, you know, they still right. the same neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, in, they, they could be that tendency of looking like, what she thinks she is, you know, but mm. I did not feel that way. Okay. So definitely a person can wear pants. I want to think 100% without any feeling anything, I think. Um, when it comes to, say, uh, fitting in, I think it's really a question of comfort. Mm -hmm. Because if you are going to wear, let's say, a suit, and then... They are going to say, like what I mentioned in the video of tomatoes, well, sit down on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they put a mat, you know, they don't put you on the floor dead, you know, but they put a mat and they sit down. But how how is the comfort level you might have mm -hmm. wearing maybe some tight pants, you know, things like that, that are not as comfortable. So I think right. when it comes to that, I would say, the comfort level is really important for you. Same as when it comes to shoes and things like that. If we are going to which we are going to do that. <laughs> we are going to walk. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way to skip that. There's going to be some walking. Okay. Even, in, even in the city, there's going to be some a bit of some walking all the time. All the time. Yeah, because people, they are not into the tendons of like, I'm going three miles, two miles, and I'm going to get an Uber and takes and all that, you know. Uh, most of the time, those distances are covered by just walking. 
So, okay. and uh, these are some of the things for the viewers so you don't know. I'm coming up with my memoir and um, I talk a lot about these things. So those are, I give details in my memoir. So if you also want that, the vision production is my site. You can go there and you can, right now it, it's not yet out. It's about to be out. So just um, maybe a few weeks, maybe a couple of weeks or something. And I'll be announcing. But um, yeah, shoes, you're going to need. For me, I prepared already. I bought my shoes and I prepared some nice, good gym shoes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because, because, yeah, you are going to walk and sometimes long distances. Okay. And when I say long, I'm talking about three miles, four miles. Sometimes. So I don't have to go to the gym while I'm there. I'll get my workout. No, you don't. <laughs> but, 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 I have a but. There's okay. a lot of feeding you, believe me. They're going to feed you. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With that in mind, <laughs> uh, you might still have to about <laughs> go to the gym. Time. Well, it will be covered up after you eat, you walk, you walk, yeah. <laughs> There's going to be walking, yeah. So comfort level, that's what you need to think about. Don't okay. have to worry All about right. if you should wear pants or what. Uh, I think in mini skate, they are not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any of those either. <laughs> those are the things I would say to my children. But anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. <laughs> Anyway, okay. so, yeah, we are here just enjoy. We are talking about the cultures, but you know, it's fun when you talk about yeah. cultures, it's really fun. And uh, you talk about the weather, yes, the weather is very different. Uh, right now, we are in winter here, they are in uh, what is that rain season? It might be the rain season, o autumn, uh, or autumn, close to it. Yeah, autumn. Is it autumn? Yeah, December. It's somewhere around autumn. There's a lot of rain. There's a lot of crops growing right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of stuff going on. Fruits, mangoes are ripening and all kinds of things right now. So the weather right now at this point, but when we go, it will be going towards winter. Okay. So... When we go to be going towards winter and um, Mutari, where most of my family concentrated, it's cold there. <laughs> it's not like Wisconsin, whatsoever. <laughs> nothing. I don't think anything's like Wisconsin. Yeah, so there's or nothing. Like, yeah, there's nothing like Wisconsin. So, you know, it's the weather actually, Jurelen, you know, the weather of Florida, where I am, right? Right. Right. Kind of very similar. But okay. Zimbabwe, I think it's a little bit colder than Florida. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In general, when you put like the days, because we have desert weather. So in the mm -hmm. morning, it's very chilly. Okay. Yeah. And winter time in the morning, it's very huh. cold, I would say. Okay. Mornings, it's so, very cold. Something like this then, a flannel shirt would I need to wear, or is this too warm? No, it's not. But in the beginning, though, but we are going to spend there some time. So we'll get into okay. that, I think, time when it's going to be slightly more colder. Okay. So you, right. a, a regular jacket, I would say it's good. <clears throat> okay. But just just a, a, a nice uh, long sleeve is not enough. Okay. okay. But a regular, I would say a spring jacket here. You want okay. to carry one of those. Yeah, just one. Got it. <laughs> yeah, that should be enough. And the and the regular days, I would say regular, you know, light clothes, they are good. Short yeah. sleeve. Okay. Short sleeve, light. Um, if you are in the pants or whatever, yeah. Mm -hmm. Shorts, you are right. I haven't noticed a lot of women wearing shorts. Okay. I never question it because I don't wear shorts that much either. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think, yeah, you know, you look at things that you also like you do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. 
yeah i haven't um yeah i didn't notice the shorts too much in women no okay. but i i saw definite pants they wear yeah. okay yeah so but young people now like like teenagers i see that more so i, I have seen shorts like in the city yeah mm -hmm. I've seen, mm -hmm. yeah but if women even in the city they could wear pants but i haven't seen shorts Okay. They could wear capris. Mm. Mm. Yeah, capris. So I don't know. I think it's just how I don't think there's a rule written up somewhere, but I think it's just how people they just live their life and they do things a certain way. That's it. <laughs> yeah, without a rule somewhere. Um, I have this burning question for you, Jurelyn. Okay. I'm going to tell you a story about this right now. You haven't heard right. this story, I think. When I was uh, coming to America, um, mm -hmm. I went to the countryside to meet my aunts, my uncles, everybody to say, bye, I'm leaving. And uh, with that, I also met my grandmother. And uh, she said to me, when I told him, Grandma, I'm leaving, I'm going to America. That's where my husband is from. She said to me, you know, in America, they don't have people there, people, exactly people like us. I said, what is that? <laughs> she said, they don't, they are not exactly people like, they are not real people. That's the way how she put it. <laughs> They're not real people. And I said, so I was really puzzled. I was thinking, what is that? <laughs> you know, so I said, what do you mean? Then she said back, she was really old in her 90s, you know. And she said back and she said, let me think. I said, okay. So I gave her a minute to think. And she came back, she said, yeah, I remember. They are colors. <laughs> so my question to you, Jurelyn, is did you ever think about what how people they will look at you when you go to Zimbabwe? Um that's a good question. Um I don't I mean, I don't think I ever thought about that. But here's the thing. I'm what, I, I've, as far as being colored, like your grandmother calls black people in America, uh -huh. I've never fit into that category because of my complexion. I'm lighter colored person. Okay. So in, in, in my experience, I've never fit in because darker complected African Americans have a different perception a lot of times of lighter complected African Americans. And I've never lived with the experience of or the consciousness continuously of that, but I get reminded from time to time. And then I have to think about it. Like now, when you're asking me, I have to think about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then my parents raised me different. My father was very, very light. Yeah. My mother was very dark. Yeah. Uh -huh. I used to think my father was white at one point because somebody mentioned colors. I never, I never knew that there was a color difference until one time I was in school. I went to a predominantly white school. And I kind of mm -hmm. liked this one boy. He was cute. And I kind of had a little <laughs> bit of a kid crush on him. Uh -huh. And one of the kids in school told me that I couldn't like him. And I said, well, why not? He's a boy. I'm a girl. Girls like boys. <laughs> boys like, why can't I like him? And the girl told me because he was white and because I was black. Hmm. I didn't know what that meant. I had no clue what that went, meant. So I went home and I asked my mom. Mm -hmm. And I said, mom, what does that mean? And she said, first of all, your daddy, you know, I, I, uh, how did I, I think I asked her, I said, is dad white? And she said, <laughs> she said, baby, no, your daddy is black. Look at his hair. 
Because <laughs> his hair was tight and curled, you know. But so to me, that meant hairstyle meant that you were black, you know. And and so the whole thing was very confusing. My parents didn't make a, very, a big issue about it. But that was the first time I realized that there is a difference between people and people look at you differently because of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So to go back to your question, I my thought is that they'd look at me as an American, not necessarily as a black American, because I never look at myself as a black American or an American because I've lived in America all my life. Mm -hmm. I know that there are strifes and that there are conflicts, but it's not until my consciousness is brought to now we're talking about the conflict. So I got to bring all the energy that feeds into that so I can understand the problem. <laughs> so yeah, I, actually, that's interesting, you know, that, you know, you you didn't think anything. And I, I don't think many people think mm -hmm. too much. But there is, um, I would say this. Sometimes there is um, a, a feeling that, yes, you are different. Mm -hmm. The way how you look. And not only just you, I am also different to the same people that I grew up with. <laughs> okay? So it's like um, the... Not... What, what you call this? The... Um, Perception again, I think mm -hmm. there, there comes the perception, how it changes, because I have left Zimbabwe, I have left my village life, and I came and I live here. There is a, a whole new perception of how sometimes other people, not everyone, but other people can look at me and can mm -hmm. view me. Um, because my children could only speak English. Some children, they call them, they are, they are white people. So exactly what they were mm -hmm. saying, I don't know. <laughs> because they have nothing that look like white, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm not sure. So I think the, the understanding there with the children was they speak the white people language. Right. They right. are white. Right. So again... How people, hmm. they put their perception according to, again, the traditions and lifestyle that we live, they put different perceptions. You know, right. they call you a certain th something, like my grandmother, who said they are not real people. Right. <laughs> you know, because to her, right. her understanding was like, they are not people who speak our language they are not people who can understand our lifestyle. They are not people who can relate. So to her, she's right. Yeah, she's right. to her was totally not like like you know they are not real. <laughs> you know, to her she right, put it like right. they are not real. Yeah. So I think this is you know. I mean, I'm sorry to bring that to you. But no, 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 no. It, 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 you, 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 like you always do, you make me understand. Because if we, if we, whenever we're communicating with people, we're actually communicating with their perceptions. And if you don't have a common base to understand what they're perceiving, you miss communication because you're communicating here, they're communicating over there. So mm -hmm. if you don't know where they're coming from, you don't know how to meet them. That's true. Um, That's very so true. I, I appreciate your grandmother's wisdom. And it was <laughs> wise for her not to, to, to say that. You know, and I think it also gives me a perception about what we perceive as being white. You know, when you said that, the thing that comes to mind for all Black people and for all oppressed people, white people have always been the ones that have been the oppressors. Yeah. You know, I don't think I even th that I can think of a situation where that they have not been the oppressor. 
So in their their desire, and I'm not saying that in a I'm trying to take the negativity out of it, mm -hmm. but in their desire to Even get to the top of the pole. <laughs> <laughs> there is, but I don't want that to be the dominating thought. Okay. But in their desire to get to the top of the pole, which all of us are trying to get to the top, yeah, they just had no problems pushing others down to get there. Yeah. No, until Where today. They, yeah, <laughs> until today. So we, and I consider, I do consider African Americans, Africans, the the darker complected culture to have more consideration for their human beings or more awareness of struggle. Oh, you are going out somehow. Can you hear me? Uh, I can't hear you. We don't know what's going on. <laughs> you really? I lost you. Oh, there you are. You're oh, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I lost you. So, as I was saying, that in 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 their approach to getting to the top of the hill and hurting others, that's been their awareness. And I don't care how they get how you get there. We're gonna get there. And for us, it's more like I want to just enjoy the love and the peace of those around me. And let's, if I'm going to move forward, let's do it as a community. Let's do it together, you know? Yeah. So there's nothing, the only thing that is wrong with one, or I don't even want to use the term wrong, it's just the way that the choice has been made to experience life. And that's yeah. what I think we have to change. Yeah. We, we, if, if we're if we're in the mode of they need to pay for what they did, then that makes us no different than what they did to us. Because now we're just flipping the pole. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we can't yeah. lose our heart in the process because that is what the soul is all about. Mm -hmm. The soul doesn't doesn't harm or hurt. It experiences, and the experience should not impede another soul it should not mm -hmm. hold back or hold down another soul but we haven't really learned how to do that so well mm -mm. Um, mm -mm. but i think it's possible i absolutely believe it's possible yeah it is i think with your work and many others um i think there's a lot that can be accomplished you know and it's already being accomplished in many yeah areas, yeah you know? it's just a matter of expanding and people, more people bring the awareness of all these things. So now, um, I, I don't know if you would, I, I already mentioned to you that, you know, there's that perception that you look different, you are different. Um, and maybe somewhere treat you different. And when I mean treat you different for Zimbabweans, they treat you special but not difference in the way like they would do anything, you know? Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They will treat you very, very different. I always refer to, you know, why I think a lot of the Africans too end up in all these colony and all these things. I think it's because of that. So nice. So, you know, you are my guest, you know, I'll take care of you and, you know, and, you know, I'll, you know, whatever you need, you're my guest, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> but then it was to the wrong people, you know, yeah, <laughs> at some yeah. point, you know. So I, I really, you know, sympathize with our great ancestors, you know, because um, all they knew at that time was really just, you know, you are a guest to me, I'm going to take care of yeah. you, you know. Right. And they, they would do just that, you know, they would take care of you. I'll give you land. I'll give you somewhere to, to do this and that. I'll give you this and that. And it was a normal practice, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, that's what I am saying by, you know, looked at it differently. <laughs> <laughs> now let's come to, uh, I think we are going to do segments of this, you know, and cover more <laughs> of this kind of thing. But that let me ask good. you, 
that, okay. let me ask you another question, maybe closer tied up to that about the traditions and things like that. Um, there is one tradition, and I have a video about that for our view viewers for your um, enjoyment to watch. I have a, vi a video about traditions and, you know, how a guest is received. So what, again, or do you have any kind of expectation? Or do <clears throat> you know that could be different? Or, or it's like whatever comes, that's what it is. <laughs> Ah, uh, you know, my expectations, I think, might be different than what you're actually asking, but I'm going to tell you my expectation. I expect to be, I expect to, to, to find clarity in this journey, clarity on the next steps of what I need to do, of who I am. I expect to find new relationships, you know. I I want to find cultures within the cultures that I can plant my feet, that I can do more of what I do, uh, whether it's with teachers or nurses or educators or village people. I don't know. Uh, but I, I want to be open to wh mm -hmm. wherever I'm guided. And I'm going to be leaning on you a little bit, Elsie, to, and you don't know that, but um, I, 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 I trust your, your energy and your, your, your spirit <laughs> <laughs> to take us where the soul needs to go. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, but as far as expectations um, externally, I don't really have any, Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, I don't, I was, I think that's a good place to be. Yeah. Um, because I think when you are getting in a, even if you have expectation, one mm -hmm. thing I have found out is that a lot of the expectation or the things that I thought I knew, <laughs> That was the biggest shocking thing. The things that I thought I knew did not turn out to say yeah. I knew anything. You know, it was completely opposed than what I thought. Yeah. yeah. So I think being, to be honest, just being blank, blank page, I think it's a safer side. Yeah. So that when you are mm. in that place, uh, then you are not as shocked. Um, even if that, you are still going to be shocked, but you were not. You are not going to say like, "Well, I thought things are like this," you know. Um, yeah. You know, there's some things you are always going to imagine. You know, maybe it's like that, and maybe it's like that. But I think again, maybe leaving it open, because my yeah. my experience, honestly. Um, so many things I thought was like this and that. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think that being open is where your, your development, your growth comes from, you know, like being open is what brought our interactions together. Having a set idea with the other two masterminds that I had, they didn't come to flourishing. Mm. You know, but I didn't have a, the same kind of expectation. I mean, we were friends and we started talking and realized that we're on a journey and and uh, our journey is similar and being open to hearing from my the powers that be from God that your resources are right here, but you're not tapping in, you know. Because yeah. I had a different expectation. You yeah. know, I, I will say that I had an expectation because you hear about Africa. I think hot, sweat, it's going to be warm. And now you're telling me it's going to be cool. I need long <laughs> sleeves. <so. laughs> and it's going to be more. By the time yeah. we are in our first yeah. week, you had experienced a whole bunch. Second week, third week, I tell you, 
you come back. Yeah. yeah good. So I'm going to go, I'm going to take all those shorts out of my suitcase. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. 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 And put in some long sleeves. <laughs> so when I, okay. when, I, when I was in Korea, and I think mm-hmm. many people who have gone to Korea as a black person, I think it doesn't matter where you come from now when you go to those places now. It doesn't matter you're from Africa or you're from Sweden, you know, but you are black. Mm-hmm. You are going yeah. to be black. You are going to be black from Africa for them. <laughs> you know? so yeah. Whether you, your Good parents point. are from Sweden, Switzerland, whatever, but you are going to be from Africa. That's it. Yeah. And I yeah. remember these people, they would see me and they would say, bananas, bananas, bananas. You know what they were talking about? They were talking about places like <clears throat> Ivory Coast, where they had uh, these plantains, and you know, and the, uh, you know, and they are carrying all these plantains, and yeah, you know, that's yeah, the food, you know, like it's their main meals. You know, uh, we don't have that in Zimbabwe, not at all. We have regular bananas. We don't even know plantains per se. <laughs> at least I don't know plantains. I started learning plantains here in America. I didn't know yeah. plantains. But I was associated as one yeah. thing. And right. Uh, right. That's, that's another another thing, too. You know, Africa is yeah. huge. We are one. We are like a, that big kingdom. But at the same time, there's a lot of uh, cultural differences right. and traditions and right. things like right. that. Right. And before I, we, I don't know if you have some last words because I'm afraid that our time might be going out. Oh, yeah, I see that. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have some remarks just to close, and I think we have to have part two, what you think? I, I agree. I on, think on there's a lot, lot, a lot to go into. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot to cover for sure. So yeah. let's have another second part. We will organize it. So for the viewers, I'm going to put a link at the bottom for you to check Jurelyn whenever her, um, her site is up, what what she offers. She offers uh, classes. Can you say that again, Jurelyn, what you offer again? And, yes, you know, I, I, um, I do one-on-one personal coaching for anxiety and depression. Uh, health and wellness for the brain, basically. And that goes down a lot of different avenues, but mainly meditation and self-awareness. Okay. And um, like I say, I'm going to put a link. So anyone who is interested can always in S in future, get in touch with her. And again, I want to emphasize where these two link traditions, some people can look at what traditions and cultures and lifestyle has anything to do with what you know, the brain, the healing of the brain. But from what we just heard from Duralen, there is a lot of the essence is in the people, in the traditions, and in the lifestyle, in the culture. That's where the essence is. Mm -hmm. And if we don't know the essence, we tend to, you know, not really understand people well. And that can lead you into a lot of issues and what she do is really organizing people to understand that brain how can we understand i don't know the lingo of that but she she will tell you about that part yeah (laughs) i don't know that part but she's going to explain those things to you as we move together so we are going to have sessions different sessions and the diversity she's going to explain all those things that are in the diversity of cultures and traditions and lifestyle and much more, you know. So she has a lot to offer. And of course, my channel, you know, Culture Infusion, you can subscribe, ring the notification bell so that we can send more videos to you as they come. Thank you so much for watching. And um, this is it for now. See you next time. (laughs) Bye. 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 So I'm going to end the recording. Bye.